Hello, BookTube. I have a Sunday starter kit for you. Uh, this is a, those of you who are new to the channel, this is a series of videos that I make where I give you, I pick a subject, or more often you pick the subject, and then I give you a list of books, of 10 books or so on the subject that I think would make a great, that I hope are of interest, that I hope are a good place for you to start your reading. Uh, and today is Sherlock Holmes, <laughs> since this is March Mystery Madness, a month-long booktube event that I'm helping to host where myself and the, the other hosts are just celebrating murder mysteries of all kinds, all month long. All the different subcategories, all the different authors, all the different pastiches, and of course, when you're talking about that, with a little bit of a gesture in the direction of Edgar Allan Poe, you're really talking, the starting point you're really talking about is Sherlock Holmes. Uh, Arthur Conan Doyle's great creation, the great amateur consulting detective. Um, and I'm also doing a small March Mystery Madness event with, with David Murphy, who is who has decided against personal, psychological, collective, and even meteorological advice to return to book two. <laughs> he has decided to return. We are doing read-along all month long, a series of them, of murder mysteries, canonical great murder mysteries. The, the fun of it being that I don't think David has read any of them. And the first one we're starting with is The Hound of the Baskervilles, widely regarded as the greatest Sherlock Holmes novel of them all, and one of the greatest mystery novels of them all. Uh, and I thought, what better, what better excuse than that to do a Sherlock Holmes starter kit? Now, I have been chastised by a number of you <laughs> that I need to put material in these starter kits so that you're not staring at my smallpox scars from 1872. And I agree with that, but I completely forgot to assemble props or even cover images for this starter kit. I will I will uh, make amends just a bit by putting a listing, the books, down below. At least I won't forget to do that. There have been a couple of starter kits where I not only didn't have any visual prompts, but I also forgot to list the books, which makes the video all but useless. <laughs> uh, but we're going to do a Sherlock Holmes starter kit uh, for today. Uh, and the place that you want to start with a Sherlock Holmes starter kit is the stories and novels by Arthur Conan Doyle. <laughs> of course you do. And when it comes to that, there are three things that I think you want if you are a Sherlock Holmes fanatic. I am a Sherlock Holmes fanatic, uh, and yet I only have one of these three things. Just random chance. It's just random chance. The Brattle Bookshop will provide. But you want three things when you have a Sherlock Holmes, when you have Sherlock Holmes in your library. Now, maybe you want more than that, but one thing that you want is a big collection, a one-volume collected Sherlock Holmes. Whether it's a trade paperback, I just recently got this in the mail from one of you. This is an example of what we're talking about. This is a Wordsworth classic. Uh, but whether it's that or there are many, there have been many, many leather-bound editions, uh, elaborate things with gold gilt edges and built-in bookmarks and whatnot. Uh, the main thing that you would like to look for in a collected Sherlock Holmes like that, there are two things that you'd like to look for. You don't have to do it. You don't, you don't have to. If you find one you really like the look of, then you should grab it, especially if it's cheap. I mean, you, there, are, there have been a million of these, so you can find them cheap in used bookstores. Uh, the main things that you want to look for are two. One, the ideal collected one-volume Sherlock Holmes will have everything. And the kiss of death here, the, 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 the yardstick to know whether or not it does is the valley of fear, because if an, if an editor is going to leave out anything, it's going to be that. But you, what, ideally, what you want to look at is a book that has everything, all the short stories and all the novels. And the other thing, ideally, that you want is Sidney Paget illustrations, the man who illustrated Sherlock Holmes for the Strand magazine for his original appearances, and really set the visual template uh, in a way that hasn't ever been supplanted. You'd, it'd be great if your one-volume Sherlock Holmes had that, but the key reason to have a one-volume Sherlock Holmes is because these stories are addictive. As any of you who have read them will ever know, they, they are addictive. And almost always, if you open up a, a volume of Sherlock Holmes and you start reading, you're going to want more, and you might want to hop around, and that's it's good to have all everything in one under one roof for that. So that's one of the Sherlock Holmes that you want. Uh, these things are so canonical. They are so enjoyable. They are so much a part of the murder mystery genre that I don't think there's any great crime in having more than one thing on yourself. And the other thing that you want is uh, the new annotated Sherlock Holmes. It's a two-volume slipcase thing edited by the great Leslie Klinger. And it is all of the period photographs, all the period illustrations, all of the work. It's, you've got all the stories and all the novels, but with elaborate annotation. A huge amount of annotation of what the characters are talking about, what the places are like, what the, the 
specific location descriptions that Don Conan Doyle gives you. How accurate are they and what do they mean? What are the historical antecedents that he's looking at? What are the things that might have been in the news that might have inspired the story that he's writing in things like Silver Blaze or the Copper Beaches or anything like that? An annotated Sherlock Holmes, if you are a true dyed-in-the-wool Holmes fanatic, is an incredible boon. Uh, and Leslie Klinger's is the update of the official annotated Sherlock Holmes. and It's amazing. Just amazing. I don't have it at the moment. And then another thing that you want, another version of the Holmes canon that you want, is uh, something that isn't all one volume. Just in case you do want to localize your reading. And for that you can do any number of things. Reader's Digest, used, for instance, used to do a whole run of uh, non of unabridged works of literature. And they did, I think, four volumes of Sherlock Holmes that are fantastic. They don't have the Sidney Paget illustrations. Instead, they have originally commissioned illustrations by other people for the, the casebook and the memoirs and the return and whatnot of Sherlock Holmes. And you do each one of those in a volume. Those are wonderful. Uh, there have also been a couple of other really good uh, illustrated sets of individual volumes of Holmes. But the one I'm thinking of for this starter kit is just an ordinary Bantam, tra Bantam mass market paperback which they did for years and years. They, they came out with two mass-market brown-spined paperbacks. What, the one big volume was a collection of short stories. The second volume was slightly smaller, had a few short stories and the novels. And they had a great introduction by Lauren Esselman, who's no mean mystery writer in his own right. Uh, and the, the Bantam had brought those out in brown Mass-market paperbacks forever and ever. There was also a box set that I had once upon a time. No idea what happened to it. I don't even have the brown mass markets without the box. Uh, and then uh, they, that was successful. People really like that Bantam edition. That's a Bantam that I would love to have up on the shelf. Uh, and then they they changed the uh, color scheme on the cover. They left the original illustrations, the, the cover pictures of uh, period photographs, but they brightened it up so it's not brown anymore. But either way, you want a, a cheap paperback Holmes as well. It doesn't have to be that. There have been innumerable others. But, but the, the, that is the place that you want to start in a Sherlock Holmes starter kit, is with Sherlock Holmes. And with Sherlock Holmes, you want collections that will answer your mood at the moment. You don't ever want anything getting in the way of you and enjoying Sherlock Holmes. Now, if that is a one, a big one-volume thing that in hardcover or in paperback that you go to and just live in, fine. If that is a collection of illustrated volumes, fine. If that is, like, for instance, a collection of Penguin volumes, Penguin does quite a few. They do a beautiful volume of the collected novels. Uh, and I think a, a separate Penguin volume for each of the individual Holmes collections of stories. Whatever it is, you want multiple. <laughs> if you're a Holmes fan, you want multiple. But then we'll move on. We'll move on from, uh, from the Holmes itself to Holmes pastiche stuff of all kinds. And one of the places that you want to start here is with Vincent Starrett. I've got the iPad here. Vincent Starrett was a Sherlockian of the first water. I, I had studied the canon, lived it, breathed it. And he wrote a book called The Private Life of Sherlock Holmes. Now, once upon a time, the great editor Otto Penzler did a collection of mass market paperbacks. I forget who was the publisher, but he called it the Sherlock Holmes Library. And where Otto Penzo goes, you must follow. As an editor, he and Leslie Klinger are incredible. If you see their name on an anthology, then get it, because you're in perfect hands. People who really care about what they're doing and know it, down to the last floor joist. And uh, Otto Penzo was that way. I don't think the Sherlock Holmes library, I'm sure, is not made anymore. Mass market paperbacks like that aren't made anymore. And who knows what the whole, the complete Sherlock Holmes library, I think there were like 20 volumes, 20 mass market paperbacks. Who knows what that set, complete, would cost you now used. No idea. I used to have the whole thing, of course, as they were coming out of the bookstore. I was buying them. I don't have any of them anymore. But the best one of that batch, the best book in that run, which was reprints and all sorts of original stuff, was The Private Life of Sherlock Holmes by Vincent Starrett, which has, uh, which is his attempt to reconstruct everything that we know about Sherlock Holmes the person. Just fantastically fun. Especially if you are sold on the stories, then it's just fantastically fun. Uh, then the next one I have here is all was also, I believe, reprinted in Otto Penzler's Sherlock Holmes Library. It's called 17 Steps to 20, 221B. And it's by James Edward Holroyd. And it has nonfiction, little nonfiction pieces and uh, little fiction pieces, little, little pastiche works in it. Delightful, delightful volume. And for those of you who are new to the subject, 221B Baker Street is the address of Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Now, those are the rooms that they take. 
And 17 Steps refers to a, a, a point that Sherlock Holmes makes in one of the stories where he says to Watson, you see, but you do not observe. <laughs> and, and one of the ways that he drills home that, that uh, canard is by saying how many times you've come up the steps of this flat, and yet how many steps are there? I bet you can't tell me. I bet you've never observed how many steps there are. So that, that's where the title comes from. The, these are It and The Private Lives of Sherlock Holmes are old collections. I don't know how available they are. I'm not 100% sure that a lot of what I'm recommending here is available. But I will list the books, just so that if you're of a Sherlockian mind frame, you have them as recommendations. Uh, then the next one is a book by Michael Harrison, who's also done a couple of Sherlock Holmes pastiche novels that were a little bit less unusual than this one. But the one I have in mind is his masterpiece, an amazing, amazing book called I, Sherlock Holmes in which, much like Vincent Starrett, he attempts to reconstruct the entire life of Sherlock Holmes in every way that we can, either inductively or deductively, from the canon of stories and novels. And it is incredible reading. Just amazing. He is such an entertaining writer. Uh, so I want to recommend I, Sherlock Holmes. But then, in our starter kit of Sherlock Holmes, you will then move on to later pastiche novels. Because Sherlock Holmes continues to get pastiche novels. I think there's a pastiche of Holmes in almost every issue of The Strand magazine, which is still going on. I'm pretty sure that's true. Uh, I'll have to check into it. I really don't know mystery periodicals in the way that I should. Since I love the genre now so much, I really should get those on the newsstand if I can go to a newsstand. Uh, but the one I want to recommend is The Mammoth Book of New Sherlock Holmes Stories, edited by Mike Ashley, who... I feel certain would agree with me that he is not in the league of Otto Penzler or Leslie Klinger, but he is still one hell of an editor. And maybe, maybe that's only he who would say that. Maybe I, if we go by the yardstick of how many thousands and thousands of readers he has pleased in his career, then maybe he is in their league. I don't know who am I to say. One way or another, he is much like them in the sense of if his name is on an anthology, you are in good hands, very good hands. And uh, there was a whole series of books, the Mammoth books, Mammoth Book of Jack the Ripper, Historical Whodunits, uh, whatever. You, you, I'm sure a lot of you have seen the, the series, a huge number of them. He edited a huge number of them. And he did one for new Sherlock Holmes stories that has barely a dud in the bunch. There's barely a bad story anywhere in that volume. Uh, so I don't know what the current reprint looks like, but, uh, but uh, well worth your time if you find... Actually... This is off the, uh, a bit of far afield of a starter kit, but if you find Mammoth books on any subject, the Mammoth book of on any subject, especially if it's got Mike Ashley's name on the cover, but even if it doesn't, if you find them and you use bookstore, grab them, because they are hours of great reading. Uh, the next one I have here is, uh, we're going to do some more pointed uh, Sherlock pastiche stuff rather than short stories and appreciations and fictional reconstructions, we're going to do other stuff than that. The first one I want to do this pointed is The Beekeeper's Apprentice by Laurie King, a novel in which she has a main character, a young woman named Mary Russell, who encounters an elderly Sherlock Holmes keeping bees on the Sussex Downs long after 221 B Baker Street, long after the famous detective careers, uh, and they fall in love. And they have a series of adventures. The Beekeeper's Apprentice is only the first one. The books go on, have gone, went on for so long that at the end of the series, I don't know that it's still going on, but at, towards the end of the series, it, asked, it actually lasted long enough for me to review one for, for a newspaper. That was, that was a lot of fun. Uh, but the, uh, you might hear that premise and be a little worried that this is what uh, the, the uh, fandom calls a Mary Sue in all kinds of fandom, both good and bad. Uh, the, a Mary Sue character is a young woman who is introduced and who outdoes everyone around her easily as a kind of a stand-in for the author. And a long time ago, long before the alt-right adopted Mary Sue as a way to bash the new Star Wars movies, long, long before that, Star Trek people in the Star Trek community of the 1960s and early 70s, long before there was anything called an alt-right, were in good conscience telling people, stay away from Mary Sue stories. We don't want to read them. We don't want you to write them. They are lazy uh, and disrespectful to the canon. You know, that, that these, these older characters aren't here for you to just easily show up. They aren't dumb. And, and a whole generation, or in Holmes' case, two or three generations of readers are not dumb to appreciate them. Uh, but it, the, the, uh, the Mary Russell stories are not that at all. They seem that way on the surface. A young woman meets Sherlock Holmes. You might be worried, like, for instance, uh, Enola Holmes is a series that's on right now that had the alt-right neckbeards all on, on YouTube, all up in arms about 
a Mary Sue who uh, who outdoes all of uh, the men in the storyline. Uh, but this isn't that. The, the, these Mary Russell adventures are terrific. They really are. Uh, then the next one I want to recommend, we'll go back a little bit. This is an author I really love. Uh, John Gardner did a series of books starring Professor Moriarty, <laughs> the, the Napoleon of crime, the arch nemesis of Sherlock Holmes, who is gestured to and mentioned in the stories and then finally appears, finally makes an explicit appearance and has the ultimate confrontation with Sherlock Holmes at the Reichenbach Falls, in which they both appear to die. Uh, and Mor John Gardner has Moriarty return, and has a, a, there are a few novels, and they are so good. <laughs> they are, this was a, a whoppingly intelligent author, and he just brings that all to... Also, a, a dyed-in-the-wool Sherlockian, I guess, I gather. And he brings that all to bear on the Moriarty novels. They are so good. They are such good Sherlock Holmes pastiches. Uh, so I, ha I wanted to include them. And then a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more... Um, Adventurous, a little bit more innovative, would be Sherlock and Love by Sina Jeter Naslin, who is much, much more famous from Ahab, for Ahab's Wife, her novel Ahab's Wife, uh, in which she, she spins a 600-page historical novel about a character who is never named in Moby Dick and only mentioned once in a thousand pages. <laughs> uh, in Sherlock and Love, she, she is uh, on much firmer ground, and it is a weird Sherlock Holmes pastiche novel. Very effective. Uh, but and beautifully written, too. I might add, beautifully written. I, I admit, I am much more of a Sherlock Holmes fan uh, than I am even a Moby Dick fan. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes and I, Rudy Kipling and I, there are, there are certain Victorians and I who go all the way back. <laughs> but nevertheless, I firmly believe, objectively speaking, that, that Sherlock and Love is written in a more beautiful register than Ahab's Wife. I don't know why that would be, and I might be wrong. It might be ju just that I'm so I'm pro so predisposed to Sherlock Holmes that I see that when it's not there. But one way or another, it's a great reading experience. You're you're gonna love it. And then from the pastiches, we will close out the Sherlock starter kit uh, with some nonfiction. There are two items of no there are of course a billion billion items of nonfiction. But there are two that I want to recommend to you. One you'll see coming because I've praised it on this channel a million times. But I got to keep in mind in situations like that that you, a lot of you are new to this channel and you're not going to go spelunking through 3,000 videos. So you might not have heard me praise it. So uh, those of you who have been here for the long haul, those of you who have been with me for, for a long time, you're just going to have to consider yourself sort of in-studio production assistants and get used to some repetition. You're just going to have to do it. If I'm going to have thousands of new people watching this channel, I'm going to have to repeat stuff you already know. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but it might have slipped your mind, too. Uh, and it'll it'll ease very naturally into senescence when I'll be repeating myself without even knowing it. It'll be very seamless. <laughs> but the first of them I don't think I have ever recommended on this channel. It's by Pierre Bayard, who wrote a book you may be familiar with. He wrote a book called How to Talk About Books You've Never Read. Uh, and he followed, I believe he followed that up with a thing about how to talk about places you've never visited. Uh, and those books are scabrous and funny. They're very French. They're, they're very sophisticated in a, in a scabrous and worldly and funny way. Uh, but he wrote a book called Sherlock Holmes Was Wrong. It isn't all about Sherlock Holmes, but it has in it, I mean, it's a really entertaining book, really entertaining, but it has in it, probably the crown jewel of the whole book, is Pierre Bayard's uh, deconstruction of The Hound of the Baskervilles, the most famous Sherlock Holmes novel and one of the most famous mystery novels of all time. He deconstructs The Hound of the Baskervilles going just on what's there on the page in order to put forward a theory that everything that Sherlock Holmes deduces in that story is wrong. He isn't, he isn't adding anything. He isn't, ad, he isn't interpolating any inf new information. He's going just on what's on the page, only he's reading it without the love glasses of Sherlock Holmes on it. It is fascinating. Even if you end up disagreeing with him, I don't know any uh, Baker Street Irregulars who agree with him, even if you end up disagreeing with me, you're going to find it just fast. That is the kind of John Sutherland-style reading, intense, just fun, muscular reading of the text on the page that I just love. I can't get enough of it. It is, in my opinion, the ultimate form of literary criticism. <laughs> Better e than the academic stuff, not that that's hard. Better even than, than really searching book reviews. It's just incredible. So I wanted to recommend it. You're, if you know Sherlock Holmes, if you know the stories, and especially if you know Hound of the Baskervilles, you're going to love reading that virtuoso piece. And the second, the second non-fiction work that I wanted that I want to write, just to, to wrap things up, 
is uh, by Matthias Bostrom. And you have seen me praise it many times. It's here in this room. The paperback has my blurb on it. And very proudly, I have championed it and sung it from the rooftops because it is so good. It's called From Holmes to Sherlock. And it is a, it's a big nonfiction study of how Sherlock Holmes went from the, the character created by the pen of a pulpy writer to a phenomenon on the page, a phenomenon in culture, a phenomenon on the stage, and then the screen, to becoming one of the, you know, a handful of iconic fictional characters. Tarzan, Sherlock Holmes, Batman, Superman, these are iconic cultural characters that really superseded the means by which they were created. And Bostrom goes through all of it. This, his writing is so good. He goes through all of the actors on stage and screen. He goes through all the permutations. It's amazing. It's an amazing book. So if you are a Sherlock fan, you really need a copy of that book. And I hope I don't need to stress that if you really are a Sherlock Holmes fan and you really want a copy of that book, you most certainly should not get the hardcover, no matter how cheap you find it on eBay or Amazon. You should get the paperback because the paperback has my blurb on it. Okay, <laughs> let's keep our priorities straight. <laughs> but anyway, that is a Sherlock Holmes starter kit for you here for for uh, March Mystery Madness. Uh, a great event. You should you should Google it. Go look up the, the hashtag. It's all over social media. And uh, maybe switch around your TBR to do some more reading, do some more mystery reading in the month of March. March is still... Uh, still young. There's still plenty of time left to be reading murder mysteries. Uh, but anyway, those are some thoughts on Sherlock Holmes. Naturally, this list could have been ten times as long, but as a starter kit, it will do. Uh, so I'm going to wrap this up, and I will see you soon. Thank you, Booktube.